Mixed in the Dark. Hey, what's up everyone? This is Mai Yang from Mix in the Dark. For my October special, I am hosting a three-part story with two amazing storytellers. You may have heard me mention Lingva and Tales from the Abyss 87 in my past episodes. Well, we finally found an opportunity to collaborate with each other. Don't forget to take some time to explore all three storytellers' scary stories if you haven't already. The storytellers' information and social media pages are included in the description. Grab a snack, a partner, a blanket, and enjoy. Hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for this very special project that I had the honor of taking part in. I want to thank Mai Yang personally with Mix in the Dark for this invitation to help narrate part of her story for all of our listeners to hear. And to Mai Yang, I am just happy to know that I have in some way been able to help inspire you, launch your own channel, your own podcasts, you know, your own platform to put out your own stories. And uh, this is how it should be, you know, us storytellers supporting each other. So again, I can't thank you enough for having me be part of this collaboration. And I just wanted to say congratulations on the barriers that you've broken so far. And to the brother Leng Vang. You've been in this game for a while, man, and I still look up to you. I just hope that you've been doing well, and hopefully we can all meet someday. But I'm starting to ramble on here, so we could probably do this all day, but let's give people what they came for. Without further ado, I give you... This story begins with a house. Part 2. This is a scary story. This is also a sad story. This story is unfortunately based on true events that happened to a family. The names of these individuals have been changed to protect their identity. All of the events mentioned in this story are written from the memory and perspective of a 10 year old girl. I remind you to be respectful of the experiences of the family and their openness to share this with you. This is a three part story and you are now listening to part two of three. This story begins with a house. Not my sister Panna's house anymore. It was my family's. We moved into Panna's house at the end of my seventh grade year. I was not happy about that decision. For one, moving to Forest Lake would mean that I would have to attend Forest Lake District schools. I was not ready to make new friends. Second, Silova passed away at that house through drowning in their pool. I was angry at my parents for not thinking about us, but I knew I couldn't do anything about it. The decision had already been made. My family had a total of nine people living in the house, including me, there were five sisters, one brother, my parents, and grandma. Three of us, the younger sisters, shared a large room upstairs together. Everyone else basically had their own rooms. My sisters and I were all middle and high schoolers and were only about a year apart from each other. We settled in our new home. To be honest, the house made me feel lonely, even though I lived with nine others and shared a room with two others. I don't ever remember a sunny day at that house. We didn't even think to use the pool, ever, after what happened. I never really felt like that house was our home. It didn't have that feeling. I always felt like it was just a house, and we were living in it, and that was it. I remember that summer to be the worst. I was angry all of the time, over nothing. I rarely saw my family. We had a hammock out in the front yard. That's where I would sit every morning and just write, listening to the grass whistle 
and feeling the wind on my skin. For whatever reason, I just felt better outside. We made it to the middle of summer. No school meant being able to do whatever we wanted to do. We would often stay up late. Our parents don't really yell at us for staying up late because we were pretty obedient kids anyway. It was hard to get in trouble. I remember one particular night, I decided to practice playing guitar. It was probably close to 2 a.m. I was a fairly new guitar owner and took that summer to learn how to compose music on my guitar as a hobby. I was practicing the chorus to my song over and over again, trying to rewrite it to make it sound more smooth. About an hour into my practice, my older sister Lily suddenly said, Hey, stop for a second. I looked at her as her eyebrows arched to a confused frown. I asked her, What do you want? She replied, I... I thought I heard something. N never mind. I continued my playing and singing. I was honestly a little annoyed because I was just in the zone and she drove me out of it by asking me to stop. Regardless, I kept going. I felt my voice becoming tired as the night grew older. All of a sudden, Lily reached her hands over to grip the strings on the neck of my guitar to stop me from playing again. Now, a little agitated, I yelled, Ugh, what the heck are you doing? Shh, she said. Just listen. Now she was starting to spook me a little. I put the guitar down. I heard someone singing with you. I looked at her confused. I heard another voice singing with you. She said again, making sure that I knew she was serious. Lily jokes a lot, but by her tone and facial expressions, I could tell she was not joking with me. We looked over at my little sister, Sarah. We saw that she had her headset on and was quietly watching her Korean drama over by her bed, undisturbed and unmoved by us. At this point, I was totally creeped out. I should have known better. Hmong folks have a superstition about not singing at night because something might hear you and neither bother you because it is disturbed or sing with you because it thinks you're singing to it or follow your voice to your home. I decided it was time for me to sleep. We didn't tell Sarah because we didn't want to scare her. My sisters continued doing what they were doing. Lily continued reading. She wanted to wait until Sarah finished her last drama series. Now if you watch Korean dramas, you would know that one episode may range from 45 minutes to an hour. I probably fell asleep before she was able to finish her last episode for the night. It was the middle of the night. I jerked awake to a loud shriek. It was Sarah. The room was still dark. I looked over my covers and saw Lily rushing over to the light switch. She flipped on the lights and ran over to give me an extra push to get out of bed. She waved her hands, gesturing for us to quickly follow her. I saw her panic look and didn't question. We quietly followed each other down the stairs. Both of my sisters looked terrified. We went to knock on my other older sister's door. Her name is Mary. Mary turned on the lights and asked her what was going on. I shrugged. I was just as confused as she was. Lily explained. We heard a strange noise coming from the windows. It... It was so close to the windows that it almost felt like it was in our room. We could hear it very clearly. It didn't really sound like a human. It didn't sound like an animal either. 
It sounded like a lot of voices put together. I don't even know how to mock it. Still confused, Mary invited us into her room. She took out extra blankets and pillows from her closet and began fixing a spot on the floor next to her bed for us to sleep on. We never told my parents what happened that night. They were far too concerned about building their farm and we didn't want to stress them out more. My grandma was living with us at the time. She broke her hip bones in a fall a few years back, so she can't walk anymore. She also doesn't talk too much. One night, my oldest sister living with us at the time was coming home from work. Her name is Tina. Our forest lake house layout is kind of interesting. Our garage is connected to our house. So when you go through the front door, you're standing in the middle level of the house. It's either you use the door to the left to get to the garage, or use the stairs to go either upstairs to the living space, or downstairs to a bunch of rooms. The only people sleeping upstairs were my sisters that I shared a room with, my brother, and myself. Everyone else slept downstairs, including my grandma. Tina's room would be the first room to the right, as soon as you reach the bottom of the stairs. On her way down, she thought that she saw my grandma walking from one end of the hall and into her room, which was at the other end of the hall. The person walked too fast to be my grandma. Also, my grandma couldn't even walk. A little weirded out, Tina went to my grandma's room to check on her. She found my grandma still snoozing away in bed. Tina went into the other rooms to see if anybody was in their rooms. No one. Everyone was upstairs in the living room. She shrugged and played it off as her eyes were just playing a trick on her. That night, we heard a scream from her room. It woke the whole family. My mom went in to check on her to try to figure out what was going on. Tina cried, telling my mom that when she reached out her hands to get her phone by the pillow, she felt a cold hand right before it slid away into the darkness. My dad blessed and tied a string on her neck that night. Tying a blessed string is often used as a blessing for wellness and to keep bad spirits away. A few weeks later, my dad noticed my grandma becoming weaker. One night, he had a dream about my grandma riding a white horse with a few deceased relatives to the house. Grandpa explained that he was there to pick up my grandma. My grandpa is not alive anymore. He died in Laos before I was born. I want to note that in the Hmong culture, when you see a white horse in your dreams, it most likely has to do with death. Because of that dream, my dad grew concerned that my grandma would not be able to live past the evening. My dad called important relatives and family members of my grandma to come to our house. It may possibly be their last time seeing my grandma alive. I remember my siblings and I gathered outside my grandma's room while we watched relative after relative entered her room to say their goodbyes. I remember us laughing and joking about how silly my grandma was as an attempt to try and comfort each other and then crying because we knew she didn't have much time to be our grandma. My grandma always wanted to pass away in her home. We made her as comfortable as we could and my dad held her the whole time. That night, my grandma passed away. 
two questions lingered in my mind since my grandma's death. Could it be that the voices my sisters heard were my grandpa and their relative spirits? Could it be that the person Tina saw was my grandpa's spirit entering my grandma's room? I... I don't know honestly. I don't really want to find out. Thank you for listening so far. This story continues in part 3 with storyteller Mai Yang from Mix in the Dark. As mentioned before, all storyteller information and social media pages are linked in the description.